Good morning friends. I hope everyone is doing well. I request everyone to watch my videos in a sequence for better understanding. If you really like my teaching and my efforts, please press the like button, share the videos with your friends, subscribe to my channel and also press the bell button to get the regular updates. In the last video, we have discussed about ARP protocol which is address resolution protocol. In this video, I want to discuss about RARP protocol which is reverse address resolution protocol. Those who have watched my earlier video or those who already know about ARP protocol, they can say that ARP protocol is useful for mapping from IP address to MAC address. Meaning is that you know the destination IP address and you don't know the destination MAC address to transfer the packet then ARP protocol will be useful. ARP will send the ARP request in a broadcast way and reply will come in the unicast way. All these things we have discussed. Now coming to the RARP, the, in the RARP, it is used to map from the MAC address to the IP address. Remember one point, this mapping from IP to MAC address is related to the destination. Meaning is that you know the destination IP address, but you don't know the destination MAC address, then you will use a ARP protocol. Here you know the MAC address, but you don't know the IP address. It is not related to the destination, it is related to the source itself. Meaning is that you don't know your IP address. If you want to find your own IP address, then we will use the RARP. Then you can ask me, sir, our own IP address, we can save it ourselves. No. Is it clear? We will not save our own IP address. We will ask the RARP server. RARP server will consist of the MAC address and the IP addresses corresponding. Right now we are not using the RARP servers, but let me discuss about the RARP. So it is useful for the conversion from MAC address to not conversion. I should not say conversion, mapping from MAC address to the IP address of the source itself. Now let me discuss how it will work, okay. Now as I already discussed in the earlier video also, we have several layers and we have a network layer and we have the transport layer and we have the data link layer. However, we have seven layers in the OSI and five layers in the TCP IP model. So now in the network layer, we have the IP protocol which is a heart of the network layer. Now on top of the IP protocol you have ICMP and IGMP and on the below of the IP you have ARP, RARP protocols. Am I right or wrong? Now what is the meaning if ICMP has to send a packet it will generate the packet and it will send to IP then IP will send to the data link layer. So ICMP is taking the support of the IP whereas if IP wants to find its the destination MAC address all these things IP will send its packet to ARP, ARP will send to the data link layer meaning is that ARP and RARP protocol are not taking the support of IP whereas ICMP and IGMP are taking the support of IP so that's why we will mention like this okay so now let me discuss as you don't know your IP address, so the IP protocol has sent its packet. Now RARP what it will do is that it will create a RARP request saying that I don't know my IP address. Is it clear? So it will keep the source MAC address its own address and it will create a RARP request and it will come to the data link layer. Data link layer what it will do? It will keep the source MAC address as MA and destination MAC address as all Fs. Meaning is that this RARP packet has to broadcast. Am I right or wrong? Okay. When I will use the broadcasting, when I want to send the packet to everyone. So RARP will send the broadcast IFI means sorry IF means FFF because it is a 
48 bit hexadecimal representation when you keep all ones you will get f f f like that you will get am i right or wrong now this packet will be broadcasted in the network are you able to understand this packet rarp request packet will be broadcasted to the network in this network you will have a rarp server now what is the purpose of this rarp server it will store the information consisting of a MAC address and the corresponding IP address. Suppose if it is a MAC address of A, it will store the IP address of A, MAC address of the node B and also it will store the IP address of the B. So even it is also there in the same network, when the broadcasting is happening, the RERP server also receives this packet. Am I right or wrong? Now, RERP server will check the MAC address. Okay, MAC address of A is this one, is matched. So, then it will send, know the IP address of A. IP address of A, A does not know. So, that's why it taking help of the RERP server. If the information is there, then it will send a reply, consists of RERP reply. What it will consist of? It will consist of the destination MAC address, source MAC address, even the MAC address of the source of the A, not A, IP address of the A also it will send. Meaning is that RARP reply will send the IP address of the A. Is it clear? Now you can ask me whether it is broadcast or unicast. It will do the unicast. Now you will have a one question. Sir, you know that RARP server only is storing this information. So why should I do the broadcast? I should have done the unicasting to the RERP server. If I have to do the broadcasting to the RERP server, why I am doing? If I want to do the unicasting, I should know the RERP server MAC address. Then only I can do the unicasting. Am I right? If I can store the RERP server, you can say that, sir, you store the RERP server MAC address and you do the Unicasting, why you are doing the broadcasting? If I am able to store the RERP server MAC address, I would have saved my IP address. Then I will not use the RERP protocol itself. So as I don't have the capability to store the information, I am not able to store my IP address. So that's why I am using the RERP protocol and RERP server to identify its my own IP address. Are you able to understand? Now you have a one doubt. Sir, how many RERP servers will be there? As you are saying that the RERP server is there in the network. So in each network, let's take that you have a network N1, network N2. I want to say that each network will have a RERP server which consists of the information of all the nodes in this network's MAC address and IP addresses. So, each network should have a RARP server. Now, can you tell me whether it is static IP address allocation or dynamic MAC IP address allocation? In this case, it should be static because each node IP address is fixed here. So, you cannot use the dynamic IP address allocation. So, this is the one of the problem in the RARP protocol. One is that each network should have a RARP server and the whatever the mapping is doing, you are doing the static IP address allocation mechanism. Are you able to understand? I hope you have understood RERP protocol and how it is working. What are the limitations? If you still have any doubts related to this concept, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts in less than 24 hours. If you really like my teaching and my efforts, please press the like button, share the videos with your friends subscribe to my channel and also press the bell button to get the regular updates thank you for watching my video have a nice day